WGPR Detroit HD2. You're watching WHPS, Highland Park, Detroit. The views and opinions expressed on the following show are not necessarily the views and opinions of WHPS, its affiliates, management, or sponsors. It's the These Nuts Show with your host Butter and friends. Butter here, magician escape artist, practicing for my show tonight. Come on in, have a seat. A little turn, ta-da! It's showtime! It's your old friend Butter here. I may be a nut, but I know to wear my mask. Please welcome my first guest tonight, fitness guru, Wally Wama. Ah, Wally Wama here to tell you to wash your hands with soap and water for 20 seconds so you will stay healthy and strong like me. Almond Cruz here, sliding in with the news. Distance is what we must do to stay away from the... La, 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 chin! And other germs in the air that might be trying to get on you. Social distancing is a wonderful way to see friends. As long as you're six feet apart, you win! Hey there, friends. I wouldn't miss this for the world. It's me, Pumpkin Spice, your healthy girl. Remember, it's important to use your kind hearts and follow the signs to stay healthy and safe at all times. Chica Chmitsky here to say, don't forget the little ones that need you to lead the way. That's how we remember to wash our hands, mask, and social distance today. Morgan Raisin, yes it's me, here to sing about health and safety. We are all here to help get a message out to your grapevine, teaching healthy choices to stay safe all the time. Don't let these guys drive you nuts. Put your mask on first, they'll let you be. And it keeps me safe la, from the... La, la, chin! That's trying to get on me. Butter me up! She's right, you know. Thank you, Hallie Cranberry, for joining the show. <laughs> Let's all be nuts about our health. Social distancing, wash your hands frequently, use hand sanitizer, and wear a mask. Practice what we learn to stay away from the... La, 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 chin! Germ! We're all in this together. Coming soon, the many adventures of these nuts in a theater near you. Feedback. 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 Hi, this is Theo Groton. And I am the BDM Pina. Inviting you to join us each Monday at 9 a.m. for Feedback. A positive image production by Hood Research. Encourage others to tune in each Monday on Comcast Detroit, Roku, Amazon Fire TV, Watch WHPR TV Network, anywhere. And take us along with you. Feedback. And take us along with you. All right. Happy Monday, everybody. Thank you so much for tuning in to Feedback, a positive image production by Hood Research. My name is Theo Broughton, co-founder of Hood Research, and my co-host... The BD, and we welcome you to the program. All right. And you know, I start out by saying Happy Monday to uh, some of the people that, that we meet, and, and we continue to, to meet supporters, and we are so happy about that. And uh, we are so happy and thankful that you tune in as well. And note that you can call in to 868-4336. There are the numbers on the screen also that you can call. And in the meantime, I just want to say that there's so much that's going on in our community. And um, this year, I've decided to, to Talk about curb appeal. I'm going to enter that in. And I suppose the closer we get to spring, the more conversation there may be about it as, as well. Um, you know, I want to say good morning to, uh, to William uh, Davis, to Katrina, 
um, to uh, Miss Farmer and Lawrence and to um, Shirley and Sylvia and, and, and Keith. And there's just so many people. Who, who do you want to uh, say good morning to? Uh, I'd like to say good morning to uh, Gladys and Clementine mm -hmm. and uh, Professor Griggs and Brother James Ford and Brother Mark Cummings, along with Cheryl D. and um, both, uh, I, I would have to say, if we just put you in a collective, we're just going to say both uh, Brenda's. <laughs> and uh, as I always ask you, uh, two things. Number one, uh, as you see me demonstrate now, have your pen and paper handy because there may be information you want to record mm -hmm. for the future. Mm -hmm. And also I ask you to invite your friends, relatives, neighbors, uh, church members, uh, oh, co-workers uh, to tune in also. And... Uh, become part of the conversation. We do appreciate you. That's right. And also I want to say good morning to Rosa and to Vera and to Ron and, and, and to uh, Carl. I, I don't want to forget Carl. And you know, we, in, we invite um, uh, Carl to uh, uh, come in sometime with us if he uh, feels up to it. And you know, uh, there is uh, uh, so much information that's going around that uh, we want to share. And you know when we're on here, it's either feast or famine, and we are expecting a guest today. But in the meantime, as far as information is concerned, well, it seems that uh, the uh, United States uh, military wants to get involved in the skirmish that's going on overseas. Uh, I'm not always... Uh, impressed and, and convinced that we need to always get into somebody else's business. Uh, we, we're still um, uh, trying to process, what is it, $450,000 that's being given to each of the people from Afghanistan who are being brought here. And um, that was a war that uh, was never going to be won by the United States, it seems. Yeah, it's interesting. They call that war in Ga Afghanistan because the Soviets and I believe the French were there. They call that the uh, the fall of empires because everybody who tried to come in there failed. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm, it took mm -hmm. us twenty years to figure it out. Right, right. And then the same thing went on with uh, what was it Vietnam, uh, where that war had been going on since the thirties or forties as well. The French were in there. S yes, yeah. same yeah. same thing, and and. <laughs> was being spent is our tax dollars to fight somebody else's wars. And, and it's, it is not um, uh, saying that we should be selfish about it, but it is saying that uh, the people in this country may not only need to be made whole on various issues, and I'm also speaking about reparations, but um, we need to have the infrastructure, you know, the, the, all, all of the kinds of basic needs need to be addressed, you know? Well, when you got Black Rock and Halliburton and way back in the day it was Bechtel, when you got these multinational corporations and they're working uh, lockstep with politicians, so everybody's getting money except the people at home. And need it, exactly. Then nationally, there's the strangest thing going on. You know, we have talked about rap lyrics. And you've heard me say I have nothing against rap music or rapping, and I can do that myself. But these lyrics are so uh, 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 egregious. We have a caller, then I'll get back to the rap music. Sure. Hello, Hello, caller. You're on the air. Would you share your name and how you're viewing us, please? Slato, Slato. <laughs> Happy Monday. You're absolutely right. War. What is it good for? Absolutely, absolutely nothing. nothing. <laughs> Say it again. <laughs> yes. <laughs> but, but we have to understand that uh, we are in a war, we are in a battle every day. And mm -hmm. even with the entertainment industry and the rappers, but spitting out a lyrical bullet and opening up demonic portals that mm -hmm. are slaying our children's minds, 
Mm-hmm. It's a uh, property, the mm-hmm. entertainment industry, as well as the prison industry. Mm-hmm. You're right. You're right. Absolutely. And uh, in New York, you know, the attorney who has stepped up to the plate since uh, Johnny Cochran died is Attorney Crump, C-R-U-M-P. He is the attorney that got involved when George Floyd was murdered by the police officer. And currently, the officers that were there on the site daring any of the residents of the city to step up and try and help George Floyd are on trial now. And... um, Seems to me like it started, their trial started Friday, Thursday, Friday. Anyway, um, Attorney Crump has come to Michigan, and he is um, acting on behalf of a a lady, uh, Jackson is her last name, trying to think of her first name. But anyway, Miss Jackson, at 19 years old, started working for State Farm Insurance Company. She worked for State Farm Insurance Company for 28 years. During those years that she worked for State Farm Insurance Company, she went to school, improved herself, educated herself to learn everything I mean everything about insurance. And as she worked for a State Farm Insurance Company, she was recognized as a superior employee. So much so that she was awarded the highest recognition that State Farm Insurance Company could give an employee. The uh, acronym for uh, that high award was CPCU. And with this award also came a trip to Hawaii. She was recognized, she, she was just always uh, talked about as to how wonderful and a credit she was to State Farm Insurance. Until one day, she noticed that Her coworkers were good to work with, but management, management, and the uh, executives had such disdain for people of color. That would mean black folks, brown folks, et cetera. And then she started hearing um, just nasty little comments here and there And so she began speaking up and speaking out because that kind of racism should not be on a job and should not be tolerated. Well, when they took notice that she was speaking up and speaking out, they, oh, they got quite upset about it. And oh, we got to do something about this. Now back to that acronym, she found out that They had a nasty little definition of it, and it was colored people can't understand. And there were always nasty remarks made about customers of State Farm Insurance Company. So they decided, hmm, we know what we can do about her. Star employer, no star employer, they fired her flat out, fired her. 28 years of an exemplary work going down the drain. (laughs) So what did she do? She went and sought Attorney Crump. Attorney Crump to the rescue. In the meantime, State Farm Insurance Company said, uh, uh, excuse me, but uh, we'll give you $175,000 if you just zip your lip. You know, that's one of those colonial, uh, I mean, uh, (laughs) cultural sayings. She's like, what? Yes, $175,000 we'll give you if you zip your lip. 
she decided, no, I'm not doing that. So currently, Attorney Crump, with four other uh, attorneys working on this case, filed a lawsuit in the state of Michigan against State Farm. And we know there's a lot of redlining that goes on in the city of Detroit. And people have even said that outside the city of Detroit, there are better rates. And one sad thing about it, if you have your vehicle registered outside the city of Detroit, then you can't vote in the city of Detroit because your identification will show a different address. Hmm. Of course, I suppose you could put the vehicle in a family member's name who lives outside of the city of Detroit if they agree. But nevertheless, back to this $175,000, Ms. Jackson said, not on your life. So the heat is on and the lawsuit is on and she didn't zip her lip and more and more people are finding out about State Farm and you need to know about State Farm. I, I have a friend who is also um, considering or in the process of uh, litigation with State Farm Insurance Company. Had you heard about that, the meeting? No. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Well, that's what's going on um, in the state of Michigan. Uh, Sylvia, a uh, slice yeah. all. Uh, uh, one of the things you said when you first came on, you spoke about entertainment industry. And then when, yeah. I, when you said that, I had to make a note. I said entertainment industry or mind control industry mm. because that's yeah. the way I look at it. Mm -hmm. And entertainment, uh, they used to talk about WMDs, which was supposedly weapons of mass destruction during mm -hmm. the uh, second Bush, uh, who went, during his administration, mm -hmm. but somebody else uh, adopted that WMDs and called it weapons of mass distraction, oh. which is what That's the entertainment right, yeah. industry is, weapons mm -hmm. of mass distractions. Mm -hmm. Keep you yeah. thinking about any and everything but what's going on in your life. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. That's right, and, and that's why people need to definitely study the art of war because the psychological warfare, that's even more powerful because once I got your mind, I have anything and everything I need from you. Mm-hmm. That's a good point. Now, uh, some of you may be familiar that uh, one of the guests we, guests we had on in the past, which was Professor Michael Griggs, wrote a book called The African American Art of War, which I happen to own. Mm -hmm. And uh, it pretty much narrows down what we as African Americans need to do and how we're being dealt with in this uh, country in general. So, uh, you know, I, I just take it from, you know, there was this, um, I know he was Asian, I think his name was Sun Tzu, who did the original uh, Art of War, uh -huh. but the one that, um, Professor Michael Griggs spoke about dealt specifically with what we deal with and, and some of the things that we can look at, mm -hmm. sort of what you're saying with this young lady who uh, is battling State Farm now. Mm -hmm. uh, we know that much of the corporate industry is pretty much a old boys network. Mm. Uh, older male Caucasians who are grooming younger male Caucasians in the same philosophy and mindset of Nobody should be running things but us. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. And uh, <laughs> this is a quote that I love from the African um, Art of War. Mm -hmm. It's the one that he says, what fate awaits the man and his family if the future of that man is crafted by his oppressor? Mm. Wow, that's powerful. Mm -hmm. Wow. You know, uh, it, it's unfortunate that since, since you mentioned the music, that there is another um, uh, plan uh, that's out there. And unfortunately, uh, one of the rappers who happens to be black uh, has his attorneys working with state senators in New York, New York, okay? And what they are working on is a bill
to get the legislature to pass into law that prosecutors cannot use the denigrating lyrics to prosecute a person for murder or any of the other uh, heinous acts that they commit. And as we uh, have seen, heard, observed in our young people, is when they listen to the lyrics once again, I'm not against rap. There is positive rap. Only the stations don't want to play positive rap because positive rap would just be too much like helping our young people to grow into loving, responsible adults. No, they want the negative rap out there to tell you, go and kill. Doesn't matter who you're killing. You don't have to know them. Just go spray the block. That's a slang term for shoot anybody you see. They don't have to step on your blue suede shoes. They, they, they don't have to call you a name. Uh, they don't have to do anything to you. Just pick somebody, kill them. You know, what's interesting uh, is that uh, we used to look at this in the 60s, and I think Patty Hearst was supposedly an example of that, where what you do is you program people, which is what you know the entertainment industry is doing. They're programming people who don't have the mindset to think for themselves. And so back in the 60s, they used to have something called deprogramming, where you would bring somebody in, basically intervention, mm -hmm. and have them speak to this individual and help them see the error of their ways. Uh -huh. But the repetition of this uh, negative, dark, even demonic rap music is, you know, it's not by, well, we're, we're dealing with something that also was spoken about in the 60s, which was called psychological warfare. Mm -hmm, and mm -hmm. uh, people don't understand that sometimes what you hear on a conscious level penetrates the subconscious and it manifests itself in an act. And mm -hmm. to give you an example, and I use this in a song I did called Pavlov's Dog, mm -hmm. in which, uh, let's say for instance, the product Jello. It had a catchy little jingle, catchphrase, whatever, say, mm -hmm. J E L L O. You know, and it'll yes. say, always, there's always room for jello. I just happened to see that commercial on TV recently. Huh. And uh, I see, uh, I, I let things get away. We're all at the bottom of the hour. But oh, my goodness. Let, let me just say this quickly that we would sing that song, whether you ever ate jello or not, you mm -hmm. would sing the song. Mm -hmm. That's programming. That's and right. we have to be aware of that because we'll sing songs or something. But we're right at the brink of <laughs> the bottom of the hour. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Wow, that was an interesting conversation that we are going to continue when we come back. And thank you all so much for tuning in. Call friends and, and neighbors and family. Tell them to turn on WHBR. Go to the App Store and download. But we shall be returning momentarily. <laughs> You're watching Detroit's own WHPR-TV, Detroit Live. This is Theo Broden from Feedback. You can watch me 24 hours a day, seven days a week at WHPR-TV Now app. Download our free app at WHPR-TV Now. Monday at 9 a.m. Eastern. It's the These Nuts Show with your host, Butter, and friends. Butter here, magician escape artist, practicing for my show tonight. Come on in, have a seat. All right, everybody, settle, Butter, you're on in five, four, three, two, one. Come on a few seconds. You gotta be enough to get out of this one. Twist a little turn, ta-da! It's showtime! It's your old friend Butter here. I may be a nut, but I know to wear my mask. Please welcome my first guest tonight, fitness guru, Wally Walmart. I wouldn't want it here to tell you to wash your hands with soap and water for 20 seconds so you will stay healthy and strong like me. Almond Cruz here, sliding in with the news. Distance is what we must do to stay away from the... La, 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 chin! and other germs in the air that might be trying to get on you. 
Social distancing is a wonderful way to see friends. As long as you're six feet apart, you win. Hey there, friends. I wouldn't miss this for the world. It's me, Pumpkin Spice, your healthy girl. Remember, it's important to use your kind hearts and follow the signs to stay healthy and safe at all times. Too good to miss be here to say. Don't forget the little ones that need you to lead the way. That's how we remember to wash our hands, mask, and social distance today. Morgan Raisin. Yes, it's me. Here to sing about health and safety. We are all here to help get a message out to your grapevine, teaching healthy choices to stay safe all the time. Don't let these guys drive you nuts. Put your mask on first, they'll let you be. And it keeps me safe la, from the... La, la, chew. That's trying to get off me. Butter me up, she's right, you know. Thank you, Hallie Cranberry, for joining the show. <laughs> Let's all be nuts about our health. Social distancing, wash your hands frequently, use hand sanitizer, and wear a mask. Practice what we learn to stay away from the ha-ha-ha-chew germ. We're all in this together. Coming soon, the many adventures of these nuts in a theater near you. I've always been a runner, but I've never run from anything, and neither has my city. Do you want to be a Detroit police officer? Sir, yes, sir! Ah! Hey, yeah. It's something special to protect the people closest to you. The ones you've known all your life. Your neighbors, your friends. I was born in this city, and I'm not going anywhere. This is my home. That's why I wear the shield. This is Theo Groton. And I am the BDM Pina. Inviting you to join us each Monday at 9 a.m. for feedback. A positive image production by Hood Research. Encourage others to tune in each Monday on Comcast Detroit, Roku, Amazon Fire TV, watch WHBR TV Network anywhere. And take us along with you. Feedback. Oh, yes. And take us along with you. And you know that you can go to the App Store and download. WHPR TV 33 and um, have us right in your phone as you drive along, or walk along, or sit and wait. And you can listen to us each Monday, 9 a.m. to 10.30. Also, each Saturday, we have an afternoon with Hood Research. And you're invited. It's a conference call broadcast. and. Um, the telephone number, you know, the BD tell you, to, tells you all the time, have pen and paper handy. The telephone number for Saturday afternoon at 3 o'clock we start is 1-978-990-5000. Again, that's 1-978-990-5000. It rings one time, then you need to put in an access code which is 338-729, and press the pound key. Some people call it hashtag, and some people say it's a tic-tac-toe sign. Whatever you call it, put in 338-729, press the pound key, and join us Saturday afternoon between 3 p.m. and 6 p.m. We have a lot of fun. We got a contest going on, too. The media is so funny. You know, we had... Um, a contest last month and uh, that turned out well and one of the hood research members won and she was so excited shopping money oh whatever you want to shop for clothes groceries gasoline for the car whatever, whatever. anyway the um, contest this month which is going to be announced the first Saturday of February so you have it in time for Valentine's Day if you choose to use it for that. And uh, I have a library of film. And you need to get six of the film in my library that are my favorites. And the second question for spending money is what movie has a movie actress who bears my name in the film? 
also the name of her co-star and the name of the movie. Those are the two questions. I wouldn't make it. Oh, come on, come on. But you're invited to join the conversation on Saturday and have an opportunity to win. And I won't give you any competition. I'll just listen. <laughs> yes. And um, give, us, give us some hints. We need some hints, hints. Oh, yes. Each Saturday, I do give a hint. Each Saturday, I give a hint from one of the film, you know. So um, there's, there's not really any hint to, to give for the second question, which is the, the movie. The mm -hmm. actress is named Theo in the movie. Oh! Uh-huh. And uh, what, what has happened over the years, because the Cosby Kid has that name and Kojak has that name, People assume, and you know what assume makes out of you, but anyway, they assume that it is only a name given to a male, and that is not true. There's a book also where one of the characters, uh, women characters, is named Theo as well. Uh, nobody thinks twice if a girl is named Terry. They don't, they don't even think about it. Males are named mm -hmm. Terry, right? Um, mm -hmm. Males and females are both named uh, Chris. Uh, I know a, a lady who who uh, is called Sam. She's always called Sam, <laughs> but that's not her uh, not her name. Her name is actually Samella. But um, there are many uh, names that I guess you might say they're unisex names, and Theo happens to be one. Believe it or not. Now back to this conversation we were having about these awful lyrics and um, yeah. I believe it's Jay-Z in, in the state of New York who has his attorneys working with state senators mm -hmm. New York state senators two of them trying to pass a law so that prosecutors cannot use lyrics of rap mm -hmm. songs that are degrading and and there's a rap song uh, we had a guest on um, yesterday or last night because uh, uh, for those of you who may not know, I uh, broadcast on Sunday nights on 9, 10 a.m. Superstation. It's at 11 p.m. Sunday nights. Anyway, we had a guest on from Chicago, and uh, he was uh, talking about a rap song where the um, rapper was describing a murder that had been committed. And he said there was another uh, rap song where they even talked about the murderer coming back and shooting up the funeral. I mean, yeah. how sick is that? It gets worse, but anyway. What about the one that uh, choked? The one that saw choking. Oh. It's a perverse song. They talk about choking from oral sex. Oh, right, mm. right, yes. Yeah. And, and, and see, the, um, the problem with this is... It's called is Deep Throat. Deep Throat. Deep Throat. Oh. And see, our young, young, young people uh, watch this, and even, even if they're of, of adult age, 18 or 21, sometimes there are little ones around them, and they're mm -hmm. seeing and learning from what is right in their face. I know when I pick up my granddaughter from uh, school, I'll hear, uh, particularly when it's warm outside and the windows are down, mm -hmm. I'll hear some of the parents who are young. Again, I'm the grandfather, so that's not my generation, but I will hear them with their children, five, six, seven, eight, nine years old, mm -hmm. who, uh, and the parent is blowing the music up, you know. Mm -hmm. And I know we like to turn music up, whatever it is. It could be opera, you know, Marvin Gaye, or whatever. But when you turn up something like that, and then the child, as you were saying, Theo, and I agree, is bombarded with this. So even on the conscious level, the child may not be able to really comprehend it, but it's uh, seeping into their subconscious, mm -hmm. and then they begin to act out those things. So 
And, and, you know, when I see the parents, you know, I can't say nothing to them because people have short fuses now more than ever before. Mm -hmm. And they'll snap at you and they will take it to another level. Mm -hmm. And so it's best sometimes not to. But, you know, within myself, I just kind of shake my head and say, you don't really realize what you're doing to the children, right. as you were saying. Yeah. In addition to that, they're damaging their eardrums. And the, the bad part about that is most times people don't go deaf instantly. It, it is something that um, gradually, it, yes. it gradually, right, gradually goes down. And they don't even realize they're the ones who are causing their children to go deaf. On top of that, in the classroom, now the child may not be able to hear the teacher well, so then the teacher's angry with the kid. It just has a rippling effect. Of a negative Johnny can't events. read because Johnny can't hear. Right, right. Yes. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. So also, uh, you have to understand that the children begin to normalize this stuff because that's all they hear. Right. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Right. And and then the little ones begin to repeat the language. They don't know at three, four, five what the definitions of those words are but as time goes on they learn uh, and somebody they act had, out somebody on facebook posted one time and i save a lot of these either statements or memes but one of the statements says is that you never realize how dirty lyrics are until you hear a child repeat them mm. and then then it's like oh boy you shouldn't be saying that but where did they get it from right exactly where did no. from where Bobby did they not. get it Quapina mm -hmm. says, it's amazing to me that billionaire rappers can fight for a bill to protect rations by promoting rappers from pr prosecution, mm -hmm. but I got nothing to say about protecting the community from the threat inside being promoted by these reps. Mm -hmm. Good point. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Very good point. The other thing... We uh, need to protect our children and right. protect women. The other thing that, that was shared is this woman uh, who basically is a stripper. Cardi B and, and Megan Thee Stallion, that's the one. They're strippers. They are strippers. They are not inside the strip club. They are outside the strip club on video, on TV, on computers on cell phones and our children see that. And this woman, uh, Megan Thee Stallion was in Texas. I don't know if she lives in Texas, but she um, has done some uh, philanthropic uh, things with her money. And uh, there were nine people who died in a fire. And I'm understanding that she took care of the funeral. That was Cardi B who did the funeral Cardi in New B. York, yes. Oh, okay. But like you say, in Texas, Ma Megan the Stallion, she built homes. That's what it was. And okay. things for uh, people. R right. So is is this supposed to be a uh, penance, you know, for what, what she is demonstrating? So in other words, say she spends $1 million, okay, philanthropic, her donations, and et cetera, then she makes five million dollars okay well she's doing 10 million dollars worth of damage to the young people in the community and this is nationwide she does something good in texas or, or wherever it is location but then the other is nationwide all of the young people that are being brainwashed as you should. Now one of the things I'll say because this is something that happened when my children were coming up and I feel like a lot of responsibilities on the parent and why I say that is because uh, I would say it was in the 90s more or less when Snoop Dogg came out with a song say rolling down the street smoking Indo sipping on gin and juice mm -hmm. so what I did with my children which is what I'm saying that parents who have children who are listening to uh, the baby and uh, Cardi B and Megan Thee Stallion. Mm -hmm. What I did with my children is I told them, I say, you know, and I had, I wanted them to rationalize. Mm -hmm. So I say, well, now, does it make sense in your mind for somebody to be riding down the street, smoking weed and drinking liquor? And my children said, no. 
And I think that the parents have to be a form of intervention mm -hmm. for that because you are the parent. You know, too many parents want to be friends with their children. They want to dress like their children right. uh, because they don't. They still trying to maintain or recapture their youth, mm -hmm. and they do that by identifying with their children's music. But, mm -hmm. but with as I say with mine, I made it a point to intervene and tell them to question the lyrics. Now, the last thing I'll say, I'll let you ladies uh, mm -hmm. get in, is that with Megan Thee Stallion, uh, yet yeah, her influence is negative, but then I also feel like it's necessary uh, because she went on ahead and got her uh, bachelor's degree and she may be working on a master's now. Mm -hmm. It would be nice if the people, the young ladies in particular who idolize her would say, you know, I don't want to necessarily dress like Megan. I love her music, but let me pursue something academically mm -hmm. as well. Get my and, master's right. like Megan got her master's. Right, because mm -hmm. so, because in that sense she is more of a role model. Mm -hmm. But she's you know, and I can imagine her. She, like you say, she's doing a stripper thing on the videos and the music. But when she's sitting up there in classroom, she's a, a, a student. Mm -hmm. And I would just hope that the young ladies who idolize her would say, well, you know, I'm gonna go ahead and get me a degree or something like that but the parents do need to uh, intervene or become a part of it. the child cannot be left to their own devices right oh I agree now this yeah. this 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 last whatever um, his you all help me with his name the national NAACP are making a fool of themselves mm -hmm. The national NAACP are making fools of themselves. They have That's an right. image, image mm -hmm. award, image award that's going to be coming up soon. And who do they have? What is this rapper's name? The the rapper that uh, has sex oh, with the devil. Nice. No, the nice. rapper has sex with the devil and they put some padding yeah. on him to make him him, H I M, look like he is pregnant. What's his yes, name? Little Nas. Little Nas X. Little Nas X. Little Nas X. You need yep. to see that video. You got to see it to believe it. Little Nas X. Have yep. one of your I grandchildren, nephews, to show it. I'm sure they know how to pull it up. It is disgusting. Yep. And and to here that the national NAACP image, underline that word, image, is that the kind of image you want before your family in general, your children in particular? You need to call the national NAACP and ask them, have you lost your ever-loving mind? What kind of Thank image you. are you putting before the public? Our children. We got a telephone number for me to call. Unfortunately, yeah. it's promoting, and uh, I have nothing against people who practice whatever, whether it's a belief or whether it's a, uh, a personality thing, but he's also a promoter of and an influencer of uh, a, let's say, an alternative lifestyle mm -hmm. or, or just yeah. say male and male mm -hmm. or female mm -hmm. and female, but his happen to be male and male, and you can see in some of the yeah. videos he's actually kissing another man. I have no problem right. with that, but I again, as you say, image mm -hmm. our children, yeah. mm -hmm. and they're you know they're highlighting him. Mm -hmm. uh, I mm -hmm. have a problem with that. Maybe it's just because I'm old school. Well, the thing yeah. that that I I I was uh oh uh, just appalled. <laughs> that's a good word. <laughs> appalled about <laughs> was the yeah. fact that he was screwing the devil. Why would yeah. you want to screw the devil? You know. Because they all into the demonic rituals. That's why I keep telling yes. people, you don't. I don't care if you don't believe in heaven and hell, but they opening up demonic rituals and they slay in our children's brains with mm -hmm. decadency, mm -hmm. uh, perversion, all this. Mm -hmm. He's butt broken. Yeah, that, that, that's that's appalling to me. Now, the telephone number for the national NAACP, Sylvia. You know you people need to have your pen. Four one zero. Four ten area code. Okay. What else? Four one zero. Mm hmm. Five eight zero. Five seven seven seven. 
Okay. The, the last four numbers? Five, seven, seven, seven. Five, seven, seven, seven. And let me repeat that for those who are listening as well, if you didn't get that. Mm -hmm. The number for the National NAACP area code 410-580-5777. That's the National NAACP number. Mm -hmm. Yes. Detroit chapter. Okay. 871-2087. Okay, so 313 area code. Yes, Detroit chapter. Okay. And it's 871. Eight, eight, yes. Yeah. What else? 871-2087. Okay. The local NAACP. Area code is 313. Vidi, what else? 313-871-2087. Mm -hmm. That's the local NAACP. Okay. And, and let me encourage uh, those of you uh, to record that. Not only call yourself, but share that number on any social media platform, whether it's Twitter, Facebook, Instagram, wherever you're at. Um, call your friends, contact them, text them, however it is you may communicate with them, and let them know what this is about, which is the Image Award, which is being given to Little Nas X, Mm -hmm. uh, and let them know what Little Nas X is about. Mm -hmm. uh, we can spend time calling and communicating with things that just really don't have any purpose in life other than amusement, entertainment, so-called quote-unquote entertainment. But we need to deal with the things that are truly relevant to our community. And it's unfortunate that we, uh, and I say all of us, uh, t in varying degrees deal with the imbecilic type of things as opposed to do, deal with the things that are really relevant to life. So I want to repeat those numbers again, and then I'm going to let Theo and uh, Sly Soul uh, again give you the background on this image award and who it's being given to. So the national NAACP area code 410-580-5777, and the local Detroit chapter of the NAACP phone number is 313-871-2087. Mm -hmm. And you know, uh, if you have family in other states, uh, other, you know, other cities and other states who are uh, active with their NAACP, tell them what is going on and ask them to get involved. Ask them to contact their local NAACP and share what's going on on a national level. It, it, you know, um, if it is true that all money is not good money, then I have to wonder if the amount of dollars that are going to be made from the national NAACP program would be not good money. I want to ask either one of you, when do they present that award? I want to, I think it's in I the, just found out about it, so I can tell you. Uh, yeah. I don't know if they already did it or they're going to do it. No, they haven't done it yet. Plus, see if, oh, see okay. if you can get it on your, on your uh, uh, computer. The NAACP, National NAACP Image Award. Award. It's in the spring, if I remember right. Oh, okay. Uh, <clears throat> mm -hmm. But oh, um, right. they have it. If, if any of you have ever watched the NAACP Image Awards, oh, then you right. know it's given in a huge, huge auditorium. Mm -hmm. And the By ticket order. price... I don't know. Yes, what is the ticket people. price to, to go? Mm -hmm. um, if it's given in New York, the ticket price may be $75. Uh, but the culture in, in New York is such that uh, the residents are accustomed to paying those kinds of prices. Uh, part of the culture in New York is attending mm -hmm. plays. They attend plays like we would attend movies here. Yes, we do have plays here as well, but uh, this city, 
uh, does, does not uh, promote the number of plays like they have in New York on Broadway. And the residents there and the, the people who come uh, on tours from out of state, out of the country, to city of New York are all accustomed to paying those high prices, you know, $75, $100. It, it's, it's not a, you know, well, not a big thing. And, and, and like you said, Theo, mm -hmm. Theo, you said no other ethnic group would spit out those kind of lyricals with this, this mantle and dehumanize and push yeah. negative images about their community and their yes. people or their children. Uh, that's right. That's right. Uh, if if somebody has has seen uh, a, a video where you have uh, Italians humping the ground or humping somebody on the bed, uh, like Megan the Stallion was doing, uh, uh, let us know because uh, we have in our research have not come across Italians or Jewish people, Irish people, Nobody. English people doing anything like that. And uh, we we have uh, uh, about a minute or so. We have to go for the top of the hour break. And um, when we come back, I, I will reiterate why I believe the big uh, promotion companies like Sony and others are promoting this kind of trash. Stay tuned. Call others. And we will be back momentarily. Now that the vaccine is available for children five and up, why do you recommend it? Kids are part of the community and they can spread COVID. We're seeing both healthy children getting sick from the virus as well as children with underlying health conditions. They can easily bring the virus home to other people that are vulnerable and make them sick as well. This vaccine can change that and keep children safe. It's essential that your children get vaccinated to protect them, to protect your families, and to protect those in the community around you. I'm joined today by Maureen Taylor and Louis Pisker to let you know about a new financial empowerment center located in the Wayne County Treasurer's Office. Do you know someone, family or friends, that need help with finances? Do you know people having trouble making ends meet, especially with property taxes or other payments? The Detroit Financial Empowerment Center can help. Treasurer Sabri invites you to visit the new Financial Empowerment Center, 400 Monroe, on the fifth floor in downtown Detroit. We've partnered with the Wayne County Treasurer's Office and the City of Detroit to provide free one-on-one -on -one financial counseling to help you address problems related to utility bills, property or income taxes, credit repair, and other financial matters. Our professional counselors can also help you plan your monthly budget and increase your credit score. This service is available to all Wayne County residents. For free and private financial counseling, contact the center at 313-322-6222 and make an appointment today. You're watching Detroit's own WHPR-TV, Detroit Live. Hi, this is the BDM Pinda from the Feedback Program. You can watch me 24 hours a day, seven days a week on WHPR-TV Now app. Download our free app at WHPR-TV Now. Monday at 9 a.m. Eastern. It's the These Nuts Show with your host, Butter, and friends. Butter here, magician escape artist, practicing for my show tonight. Come on in, have a seat. All right, everybody, show Butter, you're on in five, four, three, two. Hold on a few seconds. You gotta be in love to get out of this one. Twist a little turn, ta-da! It's showtime! It's your old friend Butter here. I may be a nut, but I know to wear my mask. Please welcome my first guest tonight, fitness guru, Wally Walmer. I wouldn't warm it here to tell you to wash your hands with soap and water for 20 seconds. 
so you will stay healthy and strong like me. Almond Cruz here, sliding in with the news. Distance is what we must do to stay away from the la, 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 chin and other germs in the air that might be trying to get on you. Social distancing is a wonderful way to see friends. As long as you're six feet apart, you win. Hey there, friends. I wouldn't miss this for the world. It's me, Pumpkin Spice, your healthy girl. Remember, it's important to use your kind hearts and follow the signs to stay healthy and safe at all times. Chica Chimitsky here to say, don't forget the little ones that need you to lead the way. That's how we remember to wash our hands, mask, and social distance today. Morgan Raisin. Yes, it's me, here to sing about health and safety. We are all here to help get a message out to your grapevine, teaching healthy choices to stay safe all the time. Don't let these guys drive you nuts. Put your mask on first, they'll let you be. And it keeps me safe la, from the... La, la, chin. That's trying to get on me. Butter me up! She's right, you know. Thank you, Hallie Cranberry, for joining the show. Let's all be nuts about our health. Social distancing, wash your hands frequently, use hand sanitizer, and wear a mask. Practice what we learn to stay away from the ha-ha-ha-chew germ. We're all in this together. Coming soon, the many adventures of these nuts in a theater near you. I've always been a runner, but I've never run from anything, and neither has my city. Do you want to be a Detroit police officer? Sir, yes, sir! Ah! Amen! It's something special to protect the people closest to you, the ones you've known all your life, your neighbors, your friends. I was born in this city, and I'm not going anywhere. This is my home. That's why I wear the shield. Hi, this is Lawanda. This is RJ Watkins. Coming to you to bring you some information about the number one detox in the nation, Lemon Burn. Lemon Burn helps to turn the fat into fit. It's for you, a happier, healthier you. Because you know healthy is the new beautiful. An all-natural way to improve your health. It promotes a healthy digestive system, attacks and reduces belly fat, as well as gives you energy. You need to get yours today. Call 313-868-6612. Don't forget to exercise and eat right. While we're doing the big stuff, replacing or lining 371 miles of sewer pipe, you can help with the small stuff, like cleaning your catch basins, disposing your fat, oil, and grease properly, and disconnecting your downspouts. Every little bit helps. And working together can make a big difference. Justice for Mario Willis. Truth. Facts. Evidence. Matter. Log into justiceformariowillis.com. Read for yourself. Have you ever wanted your own TV show? Have you dreamed of showcasing your talent for the world to see? Well, now you can. Have your own TV show. You can have your own 30-minute show. Not only will you be seen in the Detroit area, but you can be viewed worldwide. Be seen on WHPR Detroit Live, Comcast Cable Channel 91, on the web at tv33whpr.com, with the TV33 app, on Roku, Google TV, Apple TV, and on Amazon Fire TV. Act now, time slots are limited. Sign up today and get a free replay with the purchase of your time slot. For more information, call 313-868-6612. Visit our studios and receive a free TV interview to promote your business, church, or organization by appointment only. Muscles, joints, or feet tired, achy, or distressed? Tried everything? Ringmaster Rubbing Oil is a vintage topical pain reliever, trusted for over 70 years, with a rich formula for the treatment of stubborn aches and pains. 
packaged in a glass bottle for purity. Our liquid can also be used in warm water for foot soaks and compresses. A little goes a long way. Try our time-tested formula, available in several sizes. Visit ringmasternow.com. WGPR Detroit HD2. You're watching WHPS, Highland Park, Detroit. The views and opinions expressed on the following show are not necessarily the views and opinions of WHPS, its affiliates, management, or sponsors. Theo Broughton. And I am the BDM Pina. Inviting you to join us each Monday at 9 a.m. for feedback. A positive image production by Hood Research. Encourage others to tune in each Monday on Comcast Detroit, Roku, Amazon Fire TV, watch WHPR TV Network anywhere. And take us along with you. Feedback, feedback, feedback. This is We are back with you right here on WHBR, WHBS, on a Monday morning, 9 a.m. until 10.30, and I'm so glad that you have stayed with us. And back to this national NAACP fiasco mess. It's, it's terrible. How can you say image, well, I guess if you want it to be a positive image, <laughs> and include... Megan the Stallion who humps the floor and humps Cardi B on a big fat bed and and also little Nas X that is having sex with the devil. Something is just not setting well with that kind of image. And therefore, and yes. Well, I'll just I, and I will remind you, it was the therefore. I just want to say I can't. I can only imagine if he performs at that event, what that's going to be like. Ooh. Uh, you probably lose membership. Ooh. <laughs> man, man, you know what? And I was wondering if if that was one of the reasons for doing it, that they uh, think they may get new members. Mm. And uh, another question is, at the venue for this event, do they have someone outside and, I don't know, say the ticket price is $125, and could the $25 be automatically a membership? You, you know, there are uh, various gimmicks uh, that could be considered and, uh, and implemented, uh, you know. Uh, That's a good point. Person would certainly I couldn't imagine them having little pies on the stage with his butt fired up for other males. Because if they do the stripper act with the females, will they do that type of nasty act with a male? Oh, Lord. Yeah. I see what you're saying. That's sad. If anybody because has in his videos, it's very clear. They're in the prison with pink coveralls on. All males. Then it's one scene where they all take males. What at, at one scene where they do what? They're in jail. Okay, I got and they that. have these pink uniforms on. You know how everybody usually they're orange. orange, but in this in this video they're pink. Mm, and that's the special. males had on pink. And gotcha. Then they were all looked like they were in some sort of jail shower, all naked, doing all kinds of things. What about? Wow. Mm. Yeah, really nasty. So, um, mm -hmm. hey. And our children, you know, they need to be cured. They don't need to be introduced into that type of world or right. lifestyle. Right, right. Because well, there's a, uh, an emasculation of the black male that is running yes. like the wildfires in the West in California. There's a, an emasculation of the, white, uh, of the black male. Uh, which makes it seem like, as you said earlier, um, Sly Soul, that, you know, they try to normalize something that's not normal. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And it's, it seems like uh, what is seeping in also is pedophilia. Yeah. Because if, the, if, yeah, this, is, say that. if this is in the that's homes. That's why I said it opens up 
demonic portal. Exactly. When it opens those portals up, all of that is included is orgies, there's right. uh, trafficking, right. there's tra- fueled from being sacrificed. Exactly. And and I think that uh, a lot of this is, is being orchestrated by the systemic racists. And uh, the reason would be that the uh, young ambassadors who went around the world, and I say that they are the performers from Motown, who traveled around the world, received much respect, much respect. And Maxine Powell, who I will continue to lift up on a regular basis, who taught the whole team of people etiquette. And there, no hair should be out of place, no shoes mm-hmm. should be unshined, no clothes should be unpressed. And then when the young They were ones, classy, not assy. No. <laughs> I like that. Classy, not assy. You're right. You're right. And as they traveled around the world, people around the world began to have respect for the black people in this country. People around the world began to have respect for the black people in this country. According to the African American war, mm-hmm. all war is based on deception. Mm-hmm. And many of us have been deceived. Yes. That the family has been for thousands of years the primary source of strength for right. human beings. It is the psychological nucleus for self development and the launch pad for communal social mm-hmm. cohesion. Right. When this country disbanded and reorientated our families for the benefits of white society, it devastated many of us psychologically, socially, spiritually. We lost many of our traditional strengths mm-hmm. and survival techniques that we had before our minds and our bodies were hit. That's why they talk about uh, the, uh, what is it, PTSD, uh, slave uh, post-traumatic slave syndrome. Post-traumatic slave syndrome. Mm-hmm. And there, there uh, are too yeah, many of our... Group. But it's too many of our own people who do not want to accept that. You know, can't we get behind it? Do we have to talk about the slave issue all the time? Why do we have to talk about that? Because it is still present, still prevalent, still being yeah. passed down. And let me drop this... Uh, no. Kwanzaa phrase, Ujima, mm-hmm. collective work and responsibility. Unfortunately, we don't have that going on because we're not working as a collective. And Western society is notorious for being individualistic as opposed to communal. So mm-hmm. they have destroyed what mm-hmm. most indigenous cultures have, mm-hmm. which is a, a communal atmosphere. When you look at the Native American, uh, African, uh, most communities, but Western society has always been individualistic. Mm-hmm. Uh, it's all about me. And with that type of mentality, which unfortunately we come up in this culture and, and we're affected by it just as much as we're affected by the negative movies, negative rap lyrics, etc., mm-hmm. coming up in a culture like this, mm-hmm. which is designed to promote the individual and not the group. Uh, even when you look at, and, and this is something uh, I've noted over the years, that when you look at, uh, when I speak about uh, communal and uh, the indigenous peoples, they revered their elders, where here, the Western culture reveres youth. Mm-hmm. Uh, so in this culture, you just you know ship uh, grandma, granddad off to some little place and let them fend for themselves, whereas mm-hmm. in other cultures, uh, the elders were revered. You know, you sat at the foot of your elders and you listened to them because they were a library because of the life that they lived. So, so we're fighting against a culture d- that does not promote but destroys families. Mm-hmm. And we see the results of it now. Right, right, def- definitely. And yeah, there they, is they no they reason to pit the young against the old. Black. Hmm? Say that again. They, they killed the crucial building block by uh, miseducation. Right, right. And, and as I said, the, uh, the concern is to destroy the black community because they were so well respected. All of that was going on during the 60s. And uh, when, when the rap music came out, if I remember right, it was positive. Party. Uh, mm-hmm. yeah. It was very, yeah. very positive. 
And and then uh, a little little by little by little, the uh, publishing company and the systemic races who uh, own them said, we can't have people liking them ends. You know, we got to do something about this. We noticed that they're being respected all around the world, and we don't like it. Now, China, I uh, just read this within the last 48 hours, oh. is banning hip-hop in China. You know, they have already had a, pretty much a lockdown on the Internet there mm -hmm. where they only let their uh, children, I think, only an hour a day or a few mm -hmm. hours a week mm -hmm. where they're doing uh, the Internet because they figure that this influence on their culture is having a negative effect. Wow. So within the last 48 hours, they are banning right. hip-hop. because I, and It's kind of interesting because there was a James Brown song, I think, I forgot the name of it, but anyway, the song, as you know, his is up-tempo, rhythmic, so there was about seven or eight Asians. I don't want to say they were uh, Chinese. It could have been uh, Japanese. Uh, uh -huh. But what they were doing is they were doing hip-hop dances to a James Brown song. Oh. So now China has said, look, we're going to make sure that in our culture we have control over how, and, and, I, and I really don't have a problem with it, although, there, of course, there's a lack of democracy where, you know, you have the freedom of choice. But if it's a negative choice, maybe you shouldn't have the freedom to do that because mm -hmm. we can see the uh, residual uh, effects of that just here in this nature. People, like you say, they'll either listen to something negative and want to spray the block. Mm -hmm. uh, even in some of the rock and roll music, uh, there's the sat satanic type of messages about which is where the mass shootings come from in the uh let's say the majority culture the caucasian culture because we don't do mass shootings you know there may be one sprinkle within a hundred you know every now and then but we just don't do that but the satanic messages of rock and roll uh charles manson you know if you look at him as one of the ones and this was mm -hmm. back in the 60s that promote that negativity, mm -hmm. and then their children, like with Columbine and Oxford, and you know, God rest the souls that were lost. Right, uh, Jeffrey Dahmer, remember right. that one? Mm. Yeah, they they act on those type of messages, just like our children act on these ignorant messages of uh, shooting up people you don't even know, just mm -hmm. at random. So. Uh, we, there's a lot of things that need to be changed within this culture, but what we have to do on the family level is make sure that at least we, because I tell my granddaughter, as I told my children, I, I have her to try to have a more discerning uh, viewpoint as opposed to just absorbing something. I want you to discern what is being said or done so that you right. can ask yourself, is this something I should be doing? Or or their friends, peers and such. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. And also, freedom makes free. It's just caused the harm negativity. Mm -hmm. I agree. So true, so true. But I, I uh, have to come back to uh, this money situation. Is the national NAACP so down on on their luck and and so uh, willing to give up their morals for money? to fill an auditorium with young people who are only coming to watch little Nas X screw the devil or coming there only to, to see um, Megan the Stallion hump on the floor uh, like she having sex like she's a man. It, it's just um, not uh, computing the Bottom way. Bottom line, that greed is the beat. Mm -hmm. Yeah, what? The greed is the beat. Yes. Yes. What? The beat. Oh, oh, yeah. But you know that beat comes with positive to rap, and um, I've I've heard in the past with TV shows, they said, "Well, we put this on because that's what people want to see." Well, if it didn't put it on, they couldn't see it. So how could they want to see it if it had not been introduced in the first place? And when you, you think about uh, years ago, the kind of uh, shows that were on, and uh, if I remember right, most of them it ended with the moral of the story is. But when you come forward and think about the Bill Cosby show, the um, episodes that he had on that in different worlds, my understanding is uh, Dr. Um, what was Poussaint. It? Poussaint reviewed all of those episodes and made sure that the message that was coming across 
out of each episode was going to be a teaching message and a positive one. You know, it's it's interesting. I was looking at more marked off the negativity. And they both to kill any any positive images of black. Yeah. Well see that that show was number one in the United States, I believe, for eight years. But you don't get to be number one positive on television in the United States with only black people watching the show. Exactly. Exactly. And, and I think that's one of the things, too, uh, because of our higher moral standards. And as I say, this is just something that's typical of African communities, Afri and it used to be African-American communities, when we looked at uh, 16, 1700s, all we had was each other and the black church. So there was, uh, there was an image that we set which was a higher standard than the people that were enslaving our people. Unfortunately, uh, and this goes into uh, J. Edgar Hoover's and his COINTELPRO thing too. Now he said, we don't want to let anyone rise up to become an image uh, for black people to rally around, which is why Martin and Malcolm, uh, Megar Evers and so many others had to lose their lives. So now uh, they make sure, and then even when you have someone like Marvin Gaye or Edwin Starwin, as you ladies sang earlier, war, what is it good for? <laughs> Anytime that we try to raise the moral level, which is what our leaders were trying to do, raise the moral level of our people, uh, mm -hmm. then we've got this uh, anti culture which says no we, we we just want to grovel in the mud and we want y'all to grovel with us so they make sure they promote the negative images the negative mu music and as you used to say theo how denzel washington wins an award oscar for training that halle berry wins an oscar for portraying a hooker uh and so it's, if we get an award it's always for something negative because that's what they want to keep in front of us and i just say again mm -hmm. all of us have some some f level of common sense mm -hmm. let us tell our children nieces nephews yeah. grandchildren that well you're going to see these things because that's the way that's the way the world is but you can't make that a part of your life or your lifestyle observe it from a distance but don't become a part of it mm -hmm. uh and then that way you can see it for what it is but how are you going to advance in society and in the world embracing something negative which is why uh it, it, this is uh i kind of end on this this is, you know, sometimes I see these young men, but they're not so young anymore either. Some of them in their 30s and they're still sagging. And I'm thinking to myself, hey, look, brother, <laughs> I wouldn't hire you. And it's not because you're not intelligent, because I don't know what's inside your head. All I know is that the image that you project reflects to me how you think and carry yourself. And I can't have a, a business you know, I'm a black man with a business. I can't have you misrepresenting my business with the image right. because we're getting back to image again. I can't right. have you misrepresent mm -hmm. me because you look around you, whether it's lawyers, it could be police right. officers or whatever, they don't do that and they're your age. Mm -hmm. So if you think that I should hire you and I shouldn't judge you by your look and you got tattoos all over your face and everything, I can't <laughs> hire you, I'm sorry. You know, and if you feel like <laughs> right. you need to do that, then you oh. need to find a job that don't mind you looking mm -hmm. like that. And the same thing for the young ladies. You can't look like a hoochie or a hood rat and think that what? I want you in there with some six inch eyelashes on. You can't do that in my oh, business. Wow. <laughs> What whatever happened but to you that know, to be, basketball player? To be, you are so right. It's so sad and pisses me off. If you see all folks trying to dress with saggy pants, oh. all women trying to dress like coochie. Oh, but if goodness. you understand the principle of war, the numbers of drag principle is demoralization, distraction, mm -hmm. power provocation, sacrifice, ceaselessness, peace, discipline. So these people's minds have been turned upside down, inside out. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's true. And, and, and that speaks to the earlier point I made about how Western culture glamorizes the youth. Well, then that's what happens to some of our older 
our elders and mature people, they want to look like these little young girls, mm -hmm. cleavages that just run down to their navel almost. Definitely. You know, it, it, and, 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 it's, and they think it's becoming, and then they say they're doing this because the men want it. Real men don't want that. Let me just tell you ladies that now, and you can tell your daughters, nieces, nephews, we don't, real men don't want that. And I'm saying young men, because my son's in his 30s. Mm -hmm. he, he's not looking for that. He's looking for somebody, as you said uh, earlier, Sly, so classy, not assy. Yeah. <laughs> right, right. <laughs> and that, that's, that's a right. message that, that needs to be shared oft, often, <laughs> often. Get that message out to me, because unfortunately, ah, there, there's a, a bad message in these videos. And when you see that the uh, performers are making such large sums of money, you, you know, the young people seem to think that, that that's okay. But they also need to know that these rappers are not young. There are, many of them are in their 50s. And they, I mean, you know, they're pushing 60. That, that, that's not young. When they hit 50, people are, are considering them as seniors. And, and Senior you know, citizens at 50. There's one Rick Ross. I know he's got to be in his 30s, maybe pushing 40 now. Uh -huh. But I happened to listen to an a interview he was doing with another rapper who was popular more or less in the 90s and maybe early 2000s, Fat Joe. And, and one of the things I appreciate now, Rick Ross does promote. Uh, a lot of the negativity. But one of the things that he said in this interview which really caught me was that he said that he had gained a certain amount of wisdom where he owns like maybe 150 wing stops. He may own about 30 Pizza Hut franchises. So he said he realized that whatever he gained in rap was not going to sustain him because there's always new people coming. I don't care if you're in rock and roll, rhythm and blues, you know, mm -hmm. the whispers had their day, but then you got people who come up behind them, boys to men, mm -hmm. still singing groups, but they come up behind them. And so then you, you just sort of in the distance with the generation that you influence. But w the thing that I did like about what he said was that he owns these franchises. So one of the things is that means he's employing people. And mm -hmm. I would think, in our community because mm -hmm. they're not going to let you open up, up in their community so we already know how to get our community and, mm -hmm. uh, and he's looking towards the long term future. Mm -hmm. If those kind of ideas could be promoted to the youth to understand that okay yeah you may do this or do that but you got to think about the long term you can't think about the short term and, t and too unfortunately we think too much about the short term now 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 instead of what's going to happen uh, 10 years from now and they used to tell us or they used to ask, uh, and I think they used to tell women to ask men this, but then I guess uh, they said, well, where do you see yourself in five years or ten years? We have to have our children understand, well, what do you see yourself doing in the future? Not about right now, because right now uh, is, is only now, but you, you will turn 30. You will turn 35 and 40. Mm -hmm. Where do you see yourself being? And then you gravitate or move in the direction and pursue the goals that will help you establish that when you get older. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I, I think it bears repeating, and that is the telephone number for the national NAACP as it relates to this image award and uh, also the local uh, NAACP number as well. I, I tend to think that uh, the head of the local one is, is probably aware. And my understanding is he has three uh, daughters and no sons. So one would think that he uh, should be concerned about the images in front of his daughters. I'll repeat those numbers, but thinking okay. about the local uh, person, he's the one who gave the uh, award to uh, Kid Rock. So. Oh, Lord, <laughs> yes. Yeah, the Kid Rock, rock that, that wrapped himself in the Confederate flag, and he has some, de de some what, uh, degrading dating uh, uh, messages of, of, about Oprah Winfrey, was it? Right, yeah, he slammed her. So I now, what that was about, but... So uh -huh. For those of you who have pen and paper handy, the number to the national NAACP is area code 410-580-5777. And the number to the Detroit chapter of the NAACP is area code 
871-2087. And you want to call them and let them know that you disapprove of Lil Nas X uh, receiving the NAACP Image Award, which will be coming up soon. Mm-hmm. And then February the 26th. Okay. Right Fe- February 26th? 8 p.m. February the twenty sixth, isn't that special? Black History Month. <laughs> yeah, Black History Month, and on the on the day of um, what is that? The Muslims' uh, um, Savior's Day. Sa- Savior's Day, February twenty sixth. Yep. And that, I and that that's mm, that's special. But uh, we're we're down to a couple of minutes left. But I want to say this about Kid Rock, the um, white male rapper who was. Um, presented an award by the local NAACP, uh, President is Wendell Anthony, is that Kid Rock gave the local NAACP $50,000. So I guess he bought his award. Then he turned around and said to them, "Um, you, uh, I want you to give $10,000 to five organizations. And so I thought to myself, hmm, well, NAACP is an organization. Fannie Lou Hamer is an organization. What other organizations has has? Oh, he, he, oh well, no, that that was not about to happen. <laughs> but uh, anyway, that's what um, uh, what happened. So I I venture to say that Kid Rock bought his award from the local NAACP, which was actually. A slap in the face, 50 grand or no 50 grand? And, and let me say this. I just pulled this up real quick. Uh-huh. Uh, now, he gave them 50 grand, mm. but his net worth is $150 million. So 50 grand is chump change for mm. chumps. Right. Yeah, for the, yes. Yeah, absolutely. Always calling for the criminal. Mm-hmm. But uh, anyway, we, we are now at, at the end of the show. It went really fast. I've enjoyed the uh a conversation this morning with um, you and, and Thambini, my co-host. And I want to let everyone know that uh, it's not necessary for you to know everything. What is necessary is for you to know how to find what you need when you need it. We at Hood Research seek out as much information as we can to share with you. I encourage you to call and, and share with us, just as uh, Sylvia has done this morning, and it helps us all make better informed decisions. Hood Research has a website, which is hoodresearch.org. Hood Research has an email, which is as follows, contact at hoodresearch.org. Again, that's C-O-N-T-A-C-T, the little at symbol to able to circle around it. Then H O O D R E S E A R C H dot O R G. The telephone number for Hood Research is area code two four eight. Area code two four eight two three four twenty three seventy one. Two four eight two three four twenty three seventy one. We want you to follow us, Hood Research. Follow Hood Research on Twitter. The BD. If you want to be nothing, do nothing. But the only problem with doing nothing is you never know when you finish. And I want to thank our excellent engineer, Timmy Tim, who also has a show on WHPR. Tune in. That's right. Oh, wow. Stay both. Don't be fooled and for both. All right. Au revoir. We want you to tune in next Monday at 9 a.m. And join us on Saturday afternoon. Peace. Feedback. Feedback. Hi, this is Theo Groton. And I am the BDM Pina. Inviting you to join us each Monday at 9 a.m. for Feedback. A positive image production by Hood Research. Encourage others to tune in each Monday on Comcast Detroit, Roku, Amazon Fire TV, watch WHPR TV Network anywhere. And take us along with you. Feedback. Feedback. Feedback.